Ruth, welcome to the programme. I would introduce you and Made Unique, but you can do a much better job than me. So take it away, Ruth. Uh, so my name is Ruth Moffat. I um, started a community interest company uh, actually in April 2019. Um, and it's, yeah, grown gradually. But basically, we um, our aim is to support and inspire creativity in the home. So um, we do that in a few different ways. And you mentioned the type of business there. And some of us who aren't business uh, know it all. Like, obviously not me, I know all my business stuff. What, is, what does that mean, Ruth? So basically, when I started out, I wasn't sure whether to be a charity or a business. Um, and mm-hmm. um, so Wenter, who are this amazing organisation um, who um, have helped me very since before I was set up, um, I was able to have a um, meet with business advisor and talk through, well, I want to do this, but I also want to do this. So I really want to have a community impact, a social impact, um, but I also want to function as a business. I don't want to have to worry about all the ways that charities, you know, all the restrictions. I'm a trustee for a charity and I think I don't want to put other people through that. Um, and so he basically helped me see this new um form of business called a community interest company so we're registered with companies house but we're also we have certain restrictions on us um, and we um, need to have a positive social impact Um, and we kind of do a report on that every year just to say yep we're making a difference to our community as well so let's talk about that it's always fantastic to make a difference to the community especially by being a radio station on your doorstep what difference have you made so far to the community Ruth? Uh, Well, I started out wanting to um, help people who are creative um, and maybe made beautiful things, but just couldn't quite work out what their next steps were, maybe would like to sell products, but didn't know how, um, because it just felt like there were so many blocks to creative people working. um, And I know, like, even for artists, um, I used to study art, and when you're in a community, it's lovely, and you feel all inspired, and then suddenly you're out on your own, and it's really hard to keep going. Mm. Um, I wanted to help individuals, basically, um, support them, give them mentoring, so um, help them kind of know what the structures and systems are, uh, give them an opportunity to sell, so in theory, we were going to hold events, obviously, due to the last year, we haven't Mm, held any events yet, but... um, (laughs) Uh, yeah we sell on our website for those makers uh, and just try and help them with anything that could get in their way lack of confidence Um, a number of our makers might have certain struggles that um, maybe physical or mental health struggles Um, just yeah we help them through Mm -hmm. that and then last year obviously everything went a bit mad Um, and just as lockdown started we realized that um, well I think just that everybody was stuck and just how valuable creativity could be but you suddenly you couldn't go to the shops you couldn't um you know go to a group a workshop or or whatever so it was just thinking like like how can we help people where they're at to Mm -hmm. access the the value of being creative together um you know as families or ways that you could be creative remotely (laughs) um so we started writing a newsletter at that point um and then uh, ended up actually doing some craft kits through um, discovering a need from um, the YMCA, uh, our local mm-hmm. YMCA. Um, we're doing well-being packs um, that they were distributing through their family centres. So we um, worked with them to create some craft kits just to help families have physically the resources as well as the ideas. Um, what, com- what comes in a craft kit, if I'm being nosy? Uh, it depends. Um, if you would like to make a jellyfish, you will get a paper plate with some little holes and and we try and do like a whole uh, one of our values is really um, minimum waste. So we recycle, we reuse, um, we go along to Watford Recycling Art Project when it's open, um, who are brilliant. They have lots of kind of commercial industrial um, kind of stuff that's not been used. So we just try and use as, as many different things as we can, um, partly mm-hmm. to keep costs down, um, but also just um, to minimize waste and to help people realize that you don't need expensive materials to be able to be creative. So the jellyfish then will use whatever we've got for um, tentacles. So, you know, if I'm in a charity <laughs> shop and I see a nice fluffy pink ball of wool, it'd be like, great, that's some more tentacles. Um, at one point, one particularly surreal point just trying to before we got the craft kits out um I think we did it for about 150 families the first lot in the summer I had uh, sheets of bubble wrap hanging on the line because I desperately needed them to dry because I'd been painting them as little bubble wrappy tentacles and uh they they weren't drying quickly enough for me to cut them so 
Um, it's been slightly surreal at points, but um, yeah, we try and use fairly basic things just so that people can do the kits. We, we always have at least enough to do a couple of times, partly because we don't want kids to worry about if they've made a mistake or whatever, but also mm. if there's more than one child in a family, we want them to be able to have a go. Um, but we want it to be so that kind of parents and carers are learning. Oh, it's actually that easy. It's just half a paper plate with some holes in. Oh, we could do that again tomorrow. Or, you know, um, just making think ideas accessible. I mean, if any business I was involved in, if I was to be involved in any business, it would be one that makes Joe Fish out of paper plates. Sounds fantastic. Absolutely. But what advice would you give for someone who is thinking of starting a business, just like you had an idea, but is scared to take that next step? Yeah, access the help that you can get. Don't feel like, I, I think for a long time, I, I've had this idea for years and felt like um, I needed to work out all the details of how it would work before I got going with it. Um, and so then I just basically didn't start because in one sense, it's a terrible business idea. It, there's no money in it. There's no, you know, I, I still don't know how it works in that sense. Mm. Um, but through going, the help through winter just, got me going to like start seeing and seeing what I needed to have in place like what are the essentials and what are the things you can explore um so I do think just access any help that you can get and not being afraid to say I just don't know I've got this idea I haven't run a business before I haven't you know like not being afraid to ask what words mean I mean <laughs> my my lovely business advisor the number of times it's like yeah no no the back a bit I don't know that word, that word, and that word from that sentence. So can we just uh, reverse a little? Any, um, any fun business terms you want to, to try and test me on? Oh, no, no, <laughs> definitely not. I, I try and avoid them as much as I can. I use them when I have to, but... I think you make a good point, though. Business, that's the bit that seems scary. The bit that people start throwing all these acronyms. Oh, have you got your B-value or something? I, I literally have no idea what I'm talking about there. But that's, I think, what scares people, because you hear these things, you think, what, what are you on about? That's what makes you think, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this. Yeah. So we've mentioned this program Winter before, talk of acronyms and names mm. and stuff. To the to the non-business people, I like mm. myself, explain what that means, how they helped, and how you got to where you are today with Winter. Mm. So um, Winter are a not-for-profit organisation, um, which is lovely in the sense that they they're just championing people. Mm -hmm. um, so it it really feels like you've got an organisation who just want you to succeed um, and will help you with all the practical know-how. So as I've said, I, you can have one-to-one -one appointments, which for me really helped because my idea didn't fit into a lot of the things I was reading. So just to be able to talk to another person um, and, and somebody who doesn't mind where you're at. So um, my business provider had to carry bags because I was heavily pregnant at one on one thing. He had to put up with me changing a nappy on his floor in his office um, it just you know to be able to go just however you are and say this is it but I've got an idea and I'd really like this to happen so I think that kind of accepting me and not putting loads of um, kind of barriers in place for like okay well when you've got a business plan come back to us or yeah. when you've worked out you know your starting capital like I, like just to you know really work with me from the beginning um, but then also there's so many opportunities to grow. So they do a lot of free training. Um, so webinars on all sorts. So I've done ones on marketing mm -hmm. and um, yeah, there's all sorts of finance ones, tax ones, um, setting up your website. There's, there's ones from very beginning, like what kind of business model would work for you um, all mm -hmm. the way through to quite specific things. So um, that's just phenomenal to be able to access those things for free. Um, it's brilliant. And what was the, what was the biggest learning curve you came across taking your idea to business level well, we'll ask the learning curve first and then we'll work out how how they helped you get past <laughs> yeah. that. do you know it just all has felt like such a learning curve um so did you have a business so let's just let's, let's go back in time we're popping the tardis for a second oh, i mentioned you're not too much um when so you, you had fine art background is that mm -hmm. correct when yeah. when did you think business or when did you think oh maybe maybe, uh, maybe this business thing i'll give a go i really struggled after i um completed fine art courses just to keep working because I wasn't in community anymore. Um, and uh, you end up doing a different job and as valuable as those things can be, you can really miss creating. And I wanted to help other people who struggled with that. Um, I was seeing opportunities. I worked in retail quite a lot. 
um, and thought, oh, if people could just get that product into a shop, but then realizing that the systems to do that are so complicated and your trade prices and your, you know, mm -hmm. sell or return or like arrangements or, you know, whatever it was. Um, but I was kind of understanding those through my retail jobs and thinking, can I bring these together? Um, so I think gradually I became aware that there was potential there. Um, and I think I made some things of my own and sold them at little fairs and things. And that just encouraged me that there was, there was a market. People want things that are made by people um, mm -hmm. with creativity. They want to support people who are making from their heart. Um, and there just felt like there was a gap um, between these makers doing beautiful things, the market that's out there that's run in all these crazy ways um, with e-commerce and big business and just working out how, how could I fill the gap and realizing that actually I think I needed to be a company myself in order to do mm -hmm. that. And what would you say to someone who is this scared of making the big leap like you went from going mm -hmm. doing arty things to then running a business? I think initially I um, encouraged them to have some confidence um, in terms of actually if you you know, and this is coming from someone who still feels quite uncomfortable. Um, I, I um, heard some brilliant talks the other day on imposter syndrome and that kind of idea that you're saying, hey, yeah, I do this and this. And then people find out that you actually don't have a clue what you're playing at. Um, and I think that not not letting that undermine your desire to do something and realizing that your desire to do something is valid in itself, even before you've got all the experience and the um, know how to back it up. But I think sometimes research can you can end up comparing yourself to everything that's out there and that can actually discourage you. Um, mm. So if you can find an organization like Wenta, find um, people who will actually connect with you and your dream and what you'd like to do and yeah. help you explore that rather than just kind of thinking you've got to have it made and you've got to be completely stand out in order to even try, you know, start having a go. It's a difficult thing. And I love the fact that Major League is a very creative business. And I think there are lots of people listening to this, creative minds or not, who think, oh, I like the idea of running my own business. Because we all, we all watch The Apprentice from time to time. We think, actually, mm -hmm. that could be quite cool. Being your own boss. Yeah. Extraordinary. But I love the fact that yours runs on creativity. Why do you think being creative is so important? I think it's just really core to who, who we are and how we are. And um, whether that's being creative in like the classic ways we think like visual creativity or um, just creative thinking, creative cooking, creative, you know, just that kind of doing something new, something that's just playing. For me, like creativity is hugely about just recovering a bit of play. And as adults, we can often feel that's not something for us, but um, just having a bit more fun, um, I think um, can really just, it can heal like where we've, had tough times and trauma I think creativity is a really healing thing um, and I think it can build a lot of relationship and community and friendship you know just thinking um, about like with my kids I really can be tempted to think oh do you know they did messy painting at nursery so that's great they're having that experience but the other day, my daughter and I were doing messy painting ended up painting each other's faces um, which um, yes <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure she went to nursery with blue paint in her ear the next day, oh, um, no. but <laughs> it just like that's the kind of thing she'll remember. That's the kind of thing she talks yeah. about for days afterwards. Not I did messy painting at nursery, but mummy and I did it and it was funny and that kind of, um, yeah, just it really builds something when you're creative together. Um, I mean, there is there's really not a spot on answer to that, but that was a very, very nice, cute answer, apart from the face on face <laughs> thing, because I have a slight fear of, of ink on my skin, but that's a conversation for psychologists. So, you know. Now, yeah. there's something happening on Sunday, isn't there? There is. Perfect. How do you think someone could be a bit creative? Because they can't mm -hmm. go out, they can't pop to the local high street to go out for a meal on Valentine's mm -hmm. Day, which is, of course, what we're talking about, not our Sunday roasts. Yeah. But how do you think someone could be a bit creative and show a bit of love in something they make for Valentine's Day? There are lots of ways. I think if you, you know, head on to Pinterest or somewhere like that, you'll get loads of ideas. Um, one thing you can do is 
it's if you type in a couple of word searches, so you put Valentine's and then you put or hearts or whatever, and then put the materials you've got around. So cardboard box or loo roll or whatever, you will get ideas to use whatever you've got around. Um, But I think also just thinking about thinking about that person, taking the time, you know, whether that's your mum or whether that's, you know, just a friend, like for me, you know, thinking about friends who are on their own at the moment Mm -hmm. and just like, what, what do they enjoy? Um, You know, would flowers through the post be something that they'd love? Would just a card, like one of my kids, weird old cards where they've stuck bits of different things and, you know, actually I can take that for granted, but if we do that and then I write out the things that my kids are saying about that person in the card yeah. and just say, oh, we're missing when we go to the park with you and you do this and we're missing the way you make that cake or, you know, just connecting with somebody, what they love and even the acknowledgement that you remember that and you know that about them is a way of showing them love. So I think just making it really personal. So I love sending a card. I think there's something nice mm-hmm. in there about taking that step back in time and going, oh, I might send you a letter or something. Yeah. And yeah, to some people, it might seem a bit silly that you're sending someone a card. It's like it's 2021, drop them a Facebook message, her <laughs> birthday, et cetera. But if you send them a card, it's cute. It's meaningful, mm-hmm. which is something on social media isn't. And I'll give you a little time to sell now. What sort of things have made you need, um, what, what's doing well at the moment for you? So the one thing I'd definitely say is like, actually, I, I think cards... I, I know you can have concerns about waste and those kinds of things, but just physical things. I think, you know, I know there's been articles out and stuff over the past year about how people are missing touch um, because everything being virtual and imagine. remote, it's just not how we're made. Um, so I think that um, actually having a physical thing that, you know, somebody else has touched that, they've taken their time, they've written out, they found a pen, which can be a challenge, you know, oh, yeah. like they've actually, <laughs> yeah, um, really, taking the time to do that I think is really valuable so yeah we do have cards we have um in fact today we have sold out of um a card which is made by one of our makers who happens also to be my lovely sister um which is just a rainbow card um so she's done like a watercolor rainbow little details on some of the um what do you call them rainbow arch the, 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 the spectrum of color I don't yeah. know the colours. Um, too scientific for my, you know. Yeah, we're, we're not good with te- like te- <laughs> technology. Te- <laughs> I can't even get the, the word technology out. Technology of rainbows, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Terminology. There we That's go. The one, <laughs> Made you need like to keep things really simple. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's just done these rainbows, watercolour paints with little kind of um, pen details and um, just underneath painted, like hand painted the words hold on. And I think for a lot of people at the moment, that's actually really powerful, just Mm -hmm. sending a little card just to say, so um, yeah, somebody bought out our entire stock this morning, which is lovely. Um, So I've sent my sister a message saying, get painting. (laughs) Um, But so, yeah, and we've got other cards. We've got, um, we have, we work in a very wide way. So we try and go with what people are doing what they enjoy so we have some people who are named makers and you can read a bit about what they love um, Mm -hmm. what inspires them and connect with them a bit as a person we have other people so I have one amazing friend who um, makes cards she hand stitches them so each one is literally stitched by hand and we have some gorgeous ones that say love on them um, either with a heart or a little thing all done in fabric and, and stitching Um, she actually just wants to give them to support the work we're doing because she believes in what we're doing so you can't find her name (laughs) you can't like she there's not loads of information about her because she's just like oh it's not about me I just want to donate these so Mm -hmm. we have a a kind of category on our website called unique creatives who either people who create and maybe they just want the anonymity maybe they're trying something new and they just don't want it to be on their page they just want to have a play um or maybe it's like my friend who just it doesn't want it to be about her so um yeah her love cards are definitely winner for the weekend whatever you do don't say her name on the radio i know know. my (laughs) lovely friend yeah she wants to be anonymous and she lives just outside watford north watford her name's (laughs) belinda etc um i was gonna wrap just then but you said what inspires some of your makers what inspires you like I, I do I can do all the classics like I do love outside I've got an allotment and I I do yeah the kind of classic like I do love being out in nature so I think outside is so important though at the moment with everything that's, so important. that's happening and, you know that is 
yeah amazing for us I, I think definitely like looking at it, it's like oh a little bit of sun <laughs> um actually but it's yeah, freezing it's absolutely it is freezing, freezing. <laughs> my kids manage like half an hour before they're just wailing and saying how cold they are so <laughs> it's um yeah looking forward to it thawing a little um but yeah outside and reading I'm like I've worked in bookshops since I was about 14 so yeah 14 um I love reading so I think that just kind of imaginative worlds or just the way sometimes people capture things um you know we've um highlighted we've made unique um a friend of mine who's a poet in Watford um called Tracy Benjamin Matthew and she's just written her a book actually of uh, her words and just sometimes when I read her poems it's like oh that's it that those words I, I'm not as good with words um but yeah. she just kind of captures experience so like certainly when I used to make artwork in a more traditional sense I um yeah used to have a lot of words and, and one of our makers actually um Jockey um she she does um pieces with words in them um that are like really powerful statements um uh so yeah well two yeah. things to finish firstly in a game show like way who would you like to mention just while we finish here well, I think I would like to say a massive thank you to Mick, um, who's my business advisor at Winter, because, yeah, his patience and uh, kindness and laughing at me in a helpful way, um, <laughs> but not discouraging me. Um, yeah, his good humour and everything has made a massive difference. And all the team at Winter, they are just phenomenal. Um, and the um, the programme that they're running at the moment with um, Watford Borough Council, the Business Recovery and Growth Programme, is just amazing um and actually it's aside from all that other help the training and the support and the one-to-ones um i've actually had a grant from them um through that program um the business recovery and growth one um and that has allowed me to do my website so um yeah that was, that's made a huge difference because it actually means then we can be out there we can be selling um so yeah really grateful to those guys i mean it's so nice having something on the doorstep as well that's going to help and last question you can definitely guess it ruth um where can we find major neat where can we find what's happening uh so our website as helped by uh the program is um www.madeunique.org um and we're also we're on facebook and um on instagram um which is made unique cic um so yeah, do like us and follow us. And we try and put out all sorts of stuff. So like lots of comedy things of uh, attempts to be creative that go wrong. Or when we do our bigger projects, um, we love to invite people to get involved. So we have people who will come along and cut cardboard templates for masks or like, you know, just all sorts of different things. Um, we love, yeah, we love bringing different members of the community together. So um, please don't feel like one you don't have young kids it's not all about young kids I promise um that's just slightly dominant in my phase of life but we do mm -hmm. lots of things for anybody who'd like to get creative um but also if you just have a bit of time we've got opportunities we've got a join in page um so you can have a look on there and there are lots of different ways maybe you have a home that when we're allowed to you'd be happy to have people come around and be creative in or you're happy to collect cereal boxes for us um and the many other random bits that we we gather so yeah we'd love people to um to get involved however they would enjoy that the recycling element is a lovely touch at the end there as well because mm -hmm. it's important to be sustainable so i love that that's mentioned as well and being creative is very important i didn't expect this chat to be so emotional but ruth from age unique thank you for coming by when it's and we will share uh, lots of major unique bits and bobs where we can as well so thank you it's such a pleasure thank you